Have you ever stopped to consider the environmental impact of your vacation? Picture this, a majestic cruise ship spanning the length of three football fields, a floating city that houses nearly 10,000 passengers, a spectacle of engineering and luxury, these behemoths of the sea are a popular vacation option for many, offering an all-in-one getaway with endless amenities and exotic port destinations. But as the saying goes, there's no such thing as a free lunch. With great size and capacity comes great responsibility. And in the world of cruising, this responsibility is often overlooked. These floating cities are more than just holiday destinations. They are massive engines of consumption and waste. Everything from the food served in the buffet to the fuel that propels the ship across the ocean has an environmental cost, and the cost is higher than you might think. To put it into perspective, the environmental footprint of a cruise vacation is almost always higher than that of a comparable land-based vacation. That's right, taking a flight and staying in a hotel generally has a lesser impact on the environment than embarking on a cruise. Why is that, you might ask? Well, it comes down to the sheer volume of resources consumed and waste produced on a cruise ship. A ship that can accommodate nearly 10,000 passengers doesn't just use a lot of fuel, food, and water. It also produces a staggering amount of waste, including sewage, oily bilge water, gray water, and solid waste. And remember, all of this is happening in an environment that is particularly vulnerable to pollution, our oceans. The very same oceans that are home to countless species of marine life, many of which are already under threat from climate change and other forms of pollution. So while cruising might be a dream vacation for many, it could be a nightmare for our environment. But don't despair. As with any challenge, knowledge is power. Armed with the right information, we can make better choices that help protect our planet. After all, we only have one Earth. Let's treat it with the care it deserves. Did you know that a cruise ship produces several streams of waste, including sewage, oily bilge water, gray water, and solid waste? Picture this, a bustling floating city of nearly 10,000 passengers. Now imagine the vast amount of waste generated by this city in just one week. Let's start with sewage. A cruise ship can produce up to 24,000 gallons of sewage in a single day. That's enough to fill about 36 backyard swimming pools in a week. In addition to sewage, cruise ships also generate oily bilge water, a nasty mix of oil, grease, and water that collects in the lowest part of the ship. Then there's gray water, which is wastewater from sinks, showers, and laundry facilities. A large cruise ship can produce up to 250,000 gallons of gray water per day. That's a staggering 1.75 million gallons per week. And let's not forget solid waste. From food scraps to packaging, a cruise ship can generate a whopping eight tons of solid waste per week. But here's where it gets really concerning. The regulations for disposing of this waste at sea are surprisingly lax. Cruise ships are allowed to dump untreated wastewater anywhere that's more than three nautical miles away from a US coastline. That's right, untreated. The wastewater dumped by cruise ships doesn't have to meet the same standards as the wastewater we produce on land. So what does this mean for our oceans? Well, the impact of this waste can be devastating. It can lead to the growth of harmful algal blooms, which suffocate marine life. It can also introduce harmful bacteria and pathogens into the water. The ocean isn't just a giant dumpster. We need to rethink how we handle waste on cruise ships. Because if we don't, our dream vacations could turn into an environmental nightmare. Imagine a truck. Now imagine a thousand trucks. That's the amount of diesel fuel a cruise ship can burn in a day. Let's talk about the diesel dilemma. The majority of cruise ships run on a type of fuel called heavy fuel oil or bunker fuel. This isn't your everyday diesel that you'd pump into your truck. It's a thick, tar-like substance that's so dirty it's banned in some parts of the world but not in international waters where most cruise ships spend their time. Bunker fuel contains high amounts of sulfur, which when burned, releases sulfur oxides into the air. These emissions are harmful to human health and contribute to acid rain, but that's not all. The burning of bunker fuel also releases a cocktail of other pollutants, including nitrogen oxides and particulate matter. These contribute to smog, respiratory problems, and climate change. Now you might be thinking, don't cruise ships use scrubbers to clean their emissions? Well, yes, they do. But here's the catch. These scrubbers are not as effective as they're made out to be. They can remove some sulfur from the exhaust, but they can't eliminate other pollutants and the wastewater from the scrubbers laden with toxins often gets dumped right back into the sea. It's also worth noting that the carbon footprint of cruise ships is staggering. Consider this, 
A single mega cruise ship can emit as much carbon dioxide per day as a million cars. That's a million cars worth of greenhouse gases every single day from just one ship. And with the largest cruise ships capable of carrying nearly 10,000 passengers, the scale of the problem becomes even more evident. Each passenger's share of the emissions is far greater than if they had taken a flight and stayed in a hotel. In essence, cruise ships are the gas-guzzling SUVs of the sea. They're floating cities, burning vast quantities of dirty fuel and spewing out harmful emissions on an immense scale. Cruise ships are floating cities and they're polluting our air like one too. So, we have these massive polluting ships, but who's keeping them in check? This is a question that's begging for an answer. The unfortunate truth is that the cruise ship industry is not being adequately regulated, especially when it comes to the scrubbers designed to clean their emissions. Scrubbers, for those who may not know, are devices installed on ships to reduce the amount of sulfur oxide they emit. Sounds great, right? However, there's a catch. The lack of regulation on these scrubbers is a massive problem. There are no strict rules that mandate the efficiency of these scrubbers or the standards they should meet. This means that while some scrubbers may do a decent job, others might barely make a difference. This regulatory gap doesn't stop at scrubbers. The entire cruise ship industry operates under a patchwork of laws and regulations that vary from country to country. In international waters, it's even more of a wild west. The enforcement of these laws is inconsistent with many ships flying flags of convenience to skirt around stricter rules and regulations. There's also a significant loophole concerning wastewater. As long as a ship is more than three nautical miles away from a U.S. coastline, it can discharge wastewater. This wastewater doesn't need to be treated to the same standards as normal wastewater, potentially leading to serious environmental harm. The diesel fuel used by most cruise ships is another significant issue. This fuel is far worse for the environment than the diesel used in trucks, yet it's still being burned in massive quantities by these floating cities. The lack of oversight and regulation is a glaring issue that needs to be addressed. It's not enough to simply acknowledge the problem. We need stricter laws, better enforcement, and a commitment from the cruise ship industry itself to clean up its act. It's high time we held the cruise ship industry accountable for its environmental impact. The facts are clear. The cruise ship industry is causing significant harm to our environment. With the capacity to hold nearly 10,000 passengers, these floating cities are more than just a symbol of luxury and leisure. They are a significant contributor to the environmental crisis that we face today. It's not just about the high emissions profile, which by the way is worse than flying and staying in a hotel. It's also about the devastating waste streams, including sewage, oily bilge water, gray water, and solid waste. And let's not forget this wastewater can be dropped anywhere farther than three nautical miles away from a U.S. coastline, with no need to meet the same standards as normal wastewater. The diesel fuel used for most cruise ships is another nail in the coffin. It's much worse for the environment than regular diesel fuel used in trucks. And the supposed solution the scrubbers meant to clean the emissions. Face little regulation. They're essentially a band-aid on a bullet wound. So what can we do? How can we stem this tide of environmental destruction? The answer lies in our collective action and our willingness to make tough decisions. For starters, we need to consider whether the cruise ship industry should continue as is. One potential solution is an outright ban. It's a drastic measure, but one that could have a significant impact in reducing the environmental damage caused by these ships. Another option is heavy regulation. This could include stricter standards on waste disposal, tighter controls on emissions, and a limit on the number of cruise ships that can be constructed. These are not easy choices to make, but as we look to the future, we must remember that our planet is not just a resource to be used and discarded. It's our home, and we have a responsibility to protect it. It's time to take action, support regulations on the cruise ship industry. The future of our planet could depend on it. 